What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Sorry for the delay, but we are back rebuilding the Jacksonville Jaguars. Just got back from a trip out in Seattle. But we got a huge offseason ahead of us. Our first effective season went excellent. 11 wins. Gardner Minshew, really impressing. Uh, he gets our player review. He gets uh, star development from the game. Is going to enter as our captain and our uh, leader at quarterback next year. Foles still hanging around here. Big contract decision to make there. Uh, but as far as the rest of the roster goes, as we head towards the re-signing stage, the offense, we've got some re-signings to definitely think about. Both these running backs are up. These wide receivers, we've got Tajay Sharp and Antonio Callaway, who both stepped up big time as street free agent picks pickups. So we got decisions to make there. At tight end, Harrison Bryant, I do want to interfere a little bit here. There is actually a glitch where tight ends don't really get that development boost. So I think this is more than fair. He had an excellent season. We're going to give him star. He was one of our best players of the entire season. The offensive line's in pretty good shape. Maybe he's another right tackle, but Juwan Taylor's young and developing. And then on the defense, defense was pretty damn solid this year. Now, Calais Campbell is going to hit regression, and his contract is up. So he's kind of our biggest decision to make this offseason. But lots of players, young players, emerging as new faces of the defense here. So Josh Allen goes up to superstar, led the NFL in sacks. Uh, and then also these linebackers, Miles Jack, goes up to superstar X-Factor, gets the reinforcement. And then Telvin Smith... Coming back, he it was one of the top linebackers, so he goes up to superstar and gets secure tackler as well. Cornerbacks, okay, we got a little bit of work to do there. DJ Hayden regressing and set to be a free agent. AJ Bouye not getting any younger. Uh, his contract is kind of slowly expiring there. And then at safety, Antoine Winfield, uh, what was he, a uh, high second round pick last year. He actually had an excellent season, goes up to superstar. So he is going to be a major impact, uh, kind of the uh, uh, Earl Thomas on this defense. And then our Cam Chancellor in this Seattle scheme, Isaiah Simmons, has absolutely lived up to the hype. He's going to go up to Superstar X Factor. So lots of new stars on this defense, some older ones aging out here. Lots of decisions to make. It's going to be a fun offseason, so let's get into it. The resign stage, here we go. The Super Bowl between the Falcons and the Jets, and the winner will be the Jets, 26 to 23. Congratulations to Sam Darnold. All right, renegotiations. Calais Campbell wants a one-year, $13 million contract. Josh Allen really is the only defensive end left on our roster, but let's see how his regression was here. He goes down quite a bit of speed goes down well I guess he was already not the fastest guy but eight block shedding only loses two acceleration one agility so actually still not the worst athleticism hit the run defense gonna take a, a step back for sure but it's hard to let him go when you really don't have any other options I think it probably would be smart to bring him back but there is one kind of hole in this whole thing because we actually have two first round picks and one of those could be the next edge rusher to replace Calais Campbell. And would you look at that, the LA Rams, this kind of changes everything. The LA Rams went in the tank and they give us the top four picks. So the Jalen Ramsey trade absolutely works out. So thank you to Jared Goff and the Rams. That makes the Calais Campbell situation much more clear to me because we can probably get a top edge rush prospect at the top there. And maybe it's a trade situation uh, to secure that because the number one pick is going to be Trevor Lawrence. I got no doubt about that. So let's focus on Antonio Callaway first because this is about market price for number three wide receiver. He's still young, was really kicking ass for us. So about a $6 million contract. I think that's, that's pretty good for him and he's excited to stay so we keep him around that is taken care of now the running back situation Fournette did come on late but a five-year contract I don't want to pay him that we might be able to bring him back for much less than that now Tajay Sharp wants a three-year deal for 18 million dollars we're already paying D.D. Westbrook we just paid Callaway we got DJ Chark so I, I don't know about that one right there I think that we're gonna let 
him hit the market and maybe we bring him back for cheaper Muhammad Wilkerson he actually doesn't regress that much here. He wants a one-year deal, 3.46, but uh, I think I'll let him test the market. Maybe we get him back. Dwayne Smoot might not be the worst idea, but we'll let him test the market. I think the rest of these guys, maybe we just bring Perry Nickerson back. He doesn't even want any guaranteed money, so he'll come back. But uh, the rest of these guys, I think I'm going to let test the market and see what we have to play with moving forward. So stage one, here we go. The moment of truth, who is available? Dalvin Cook is available, not receiving any offers either. That is interesting if we might be able to undercut you know, his asking price considering he's not getting any offers. Calais Campbell is receiving offers. Might wanna think about that. Quarterback, we are good. Now, Nick Foles, we can actually save a bunch of money if we do wanna cut him. He is gonna be the best backup available to us, so if you know, it didn't look like there was a ton of free agents here that we love. Um, if it makes sense to keep him, we certainly will. So the first guy I want to look at was Tajay Sharp. He can definitely still be a player for us. Um, let's see how he feels about uh, a little short of $3 million per year to be a wide receiver for. He's not crazy about it, but he might take that. We definitely need another tight end. Someone that can block, but also run a little bit. I think CJ Uzuma would be a good fit there. Uh, I'm going to offer him, you know, nothing crazy here, but decent money for a tight end too, I suppose. As far as the offensive line is concerned, I don't think we need to make any splashes there. I like what we got. I'm thinking heavily about Calais Campbell. $13 million a year. Would sure up that D-line. We keep the X-Factor around. Definitely something we want to think about but let's get through the rest of these positions first linebacker we definitely don't need to sign anyone we do need a nickel corner because dj hayden is on his way out and i think jordan lewis might be the best bet there he's only 26 give him like a three-year deal for like four 4.5 mil maybe that puts us at 22 million dollars in cap space safety we are absolutely fine now, I'm really intrigued by the fact that Dalvin Cook doesn't have any offers. We might be able to offer him a one-year deal, kind of a prove-it year for him at you know $10 million. And maybe he, he will say, okay, if I'm not getting offers, I'll, I'll go to London and you know make a name for myself, maybe get a big contract after that. The running back market can be weird sometimes, so let's give that a go. Leonard Fournette could be a fallback there. We do got Brooks, we got Killens if things don't work out. And then I really think we should just let Campbell go instead of paying him that $12 million contract because that would allow us to sign some defensive tackle depth here, which we definitely need. After Tate and Bryan, we got nothing. So Muhammad Wilkerson, Malik Jackson, Don Terry Poe. There's veteran options we can sign here. Tyler Davison. I think he's a pretty good run defender. Yeah, he's pretty solid. So let's actually go. Wilkerson's getting an offer. Let's see if we can bring Malik Jackson back at about four million. Really good pass rushing skill set. And then maybe we sign. Let's see who's who's the better run defender. It's actually going to be Tyler Davison. Like a two million dollar offer for him. And then it wouldn't hurt to sign another edge player, but I do think we're going to draft one very high there with that top pick. We might even trade for one, but Tock McKinley not receiving any offers at the moment. Should we offer him a one-year, $6 million contract? I don't see why not. We'll see how he feels about that. So that could be an exciting class. Let's see how this all plays out. So we get Uzuma, Sharp, and... Jordan Lewis. So rounding out the depth there, we get our starting nickel corner. Uh, didn't say rejected on Dalvin Cook, so it looks like we're still in the running there. Wow, he's still not getting any offers. Tock McKinley, we're going to get blown out on him. Both these two defensive tackles are still up there, so that gives us a little more leverage. I mean, Dalvin, you aren't interested in the, the one-year thing. Should we give you a three-year deal? It's scary to me to pay a running back that much, but Gardner Minshew at this point, 
heading into his third season. So we're not going to have to pay him for two more years. Maybe we make this a two-year deal and we can bump it up a little bit. He doesn't like it that much more, but I mean, that's team friendly for us. And then we have six million other dollars to spend. Leonard Fournette still not getting any offers. Trey Hendrickson, we did back out of the pursuit of uh, Tock McKinley. So maybe Trey Hendrickson at around $3 million per for two years could be a good deal for a number three edge guy. Well, we're still the top offers on these guys, so let's go ahead and advance. We actually have some scouting to do. Let's take care of scouting these pass rushers. All right, come on, Delvin. Man, he is not budging. We're still the top offer on him. All these guys. And I think we should stand pat there and just call their bluff. Might not hurt to scout some of these running backs. Actually, we already have a decent amount scouted. Let's go back to D linemen. Maybe some more D tackles in case we don't get those guys. All right, come on. Really, so Delvin Cook sits through the entire process and does not sign anywhere, which means we could still sign him in the fall before the season starts, but I can't believe that he didn't get any offers that were better than ours and that he didn't take ours considering he didn't get any offers. Not gonna say it's the crazy most unrealistic thing in the world for A, a running back to be stubborn like that and want more money, uh, but also B, teams not to wanna pay a running back that much. So uh, definitely a development there. Potentially gonna bring in Dalvin Cook at the end of this episode as a free agent. If we do so, I would edit that contract probably to that two year $20 million that we had on the table instead of him going and then signing a one year $6 million deal with God knows who. Uh, so let's go ahead to the draft. You can see here, both Dalvin Cook and Leonard Fournette are still available. We're still the, the top bid on him. So it's not too big of a stretch to say that as the draft and the offseason goes on, he doesn't get any more offers and then eventually does sign with us, even if it's kind of weird Madden engine stuff. Uh, but let's start drafting. I would assume the first pick is going to be Trevor Lawrence here to the Vikings, and there you go. So let's look at, at our board real quick because I'm contemplating a trade up for Aziz, Aziz Ajulari would kind of be the Yannick Ngakwe replacement. Actually very similar size and athleticism. Would obviously be a defensive end in our scheme. You do have Ernest Brown there. He's going to be more of the Calais Campbell type. Uh, definitely would not be a poor option. Uh, those are really the only two first round defensive end prospects. You got uh, Bretton Knox, also kind of a speedier, speed rusher kind of guy. Wouldn't be the worst pick, but I would much rather have Ajulari. So the question really becomes, is it worth trading up to lock down Ajulari or do you risk it? When I look at our, our roster, we don't have a ton of holes. We could use another corner for sure. But we got two first round picks. We've got a second round pick at the end of the second round. And I'm trying to go into my kind of historical brain archives. I think when the Niners traded down from two to three, they gave up a third round pick or uh, got a third round pick from the Bears to do it. So I don't think it's crazy to say a second round pick to go from two to four would be enough to persuade the Raiders. Now I'm pretty sure they're not gonna accept that in the actual game engine. We can certainly try it, but basically no trades ever work whether you're giving too much or not enough but because i know people will complain um i might as well try so we go a first for the fourth pick and 60 and they're at least half interested but i really think this is about the value uh, for that raiders have lots of holes so i don't think it's crazy for them to move down uh, still gonna get an elite prospect oh look at that the chargers good team to kind of relocate and pick a new team the sacramento redwoods that's kind of a cool narrative there so the raiders they've hired uh fired john gruden rather so we're giving up a second round pick to move up to the second pick 
And with that pick, we are going to take the 20-year-old edge rusher, Aziz Ajilari, out of Georgia. Hidden development, 76 overall. Absolutely, we'll take him to London with us. Let's see how the next couple picks play out. Justin Ross goes to the Giants. And the Raiders are going to take a safety, Javon Holland. All right, uh, I'm not actually going to skip ahead here to our next pick. Brenton Knox actually still available. So I think corner, a top need for us. If we could nail this pick, that'd be pretty huge. This Jermaine Waller seems to be kind of that press zone archetype that we like. This Damari Mathis has a first round grade, good ath uh, athleticism, more of a slot archetype, has both man and zone skills. I do think we should be putting a priority on getting a press zone corner because we really are reliving the Seattle cover three press glory days. This guy's 21 years old. He's good enough athlete, a good vertical, has the press and zone abilities. His, his play recognition is high, so he's not an idiot. I think this has got to be the pick for us. He can develop there as our, basically our third or fourth corner, depending how you look at it, and take over for A.J. Bouye when it's time to move on. And he does have hidden development, which is huge. Uh, that was basically the biggest thing we wanted there. 21 years old, 71 overall. Uh, and there you go. He's a great archetype fit. 91 speed. He can kind of try to become a, a Richard Sherman, as we already have Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas in this defense. So pretty good couple of picks. Now we're going to have to skip around, uh, skip ahead to the fourth round. But we have filled our two biggest needs on this team in the draft so far. And here we are in the fourth round. The Damari Mathis just went. That would have been nuts to get someone we are considering in the first. Uh, that slot archetype. More corner depth certainly could not be uh, a big mistake here. Look at Matt Hankins has a first round grade. Definitely intriguing option there. We could also think about a backup quarterback uh, if we were to move on from Nick Foles. A running back could certainly be an option. I do think defensive tackles probably our biggest need as we sit here right now. Farrell is the only guy we have scouted that has kind of positive grades here. Uh, I think that's going to be the pick here in the fourth round. Solid athlete, good power moves, pursuit. Hidden development, 22 overall or 22 years old. Can certainly work with that. And we have another pick here in the fourth. So that was the Rams pick. I think a corner would be the right move here. Here's a slot archetype. A lot of slot kind of guys. The other option would be to get a, actually it's the fourth round. We're not gonna draft a fullback in the fourth round. Disregard that. Um, tight end would, would actually be a good pick here as well. We've got two freak athletes at the top here. Four, five, seven for him. Four, five, eight for him. I mean, we know Hunter Bryant out of Washington's a stud. This guy's a little bigger, maybe could become more of a blocker. I'm gonna go with the bigger body here, uh, just cause that's kind of my preference. And he is a freak. Hidden development, we are nailing the development traits here. So that's a good find in the fourth. Not sure where we got this fifth round pick from. I think this was a trade along the line there. Definitely use more depth at corner. Fortunately, we haven't scouted down here, so we're kind of throwing darts. This Brandon E. Coles looks like he might be able to get, uh, be a guy that could play inside or outside. 5'11", 174, good coverage ability. Let's go ahead and take him. 22 years old, nothing too special about him. Definitely more of a slot kind of guy with that 62 press, but that's all right. That's kind of our biggest need. So some corner depth there. Another fifth round pick. We did not get Tajay Sharp back here, so perhaps a wide receiver. Lots of big names here. Again, this draft class, you know, we started this before a lot of these declarations, but Quintez Cephas is a guy that's gonna be getting put into the 2020 draft class and it's gonna be a little better than this, but he's definitely an option here. There's a speedster in 
Anthony Schwartz, who's the fastest player in the class, but more of just a track star. We kind of got DJ Chark already. Donovan Peoples-Jones, Tariq Black, a couple Michigan options. You know what, I'm gonna go with Quintez Cephas. 64 overall, more of a deep threat. That's all right, he's just depth. All right, sixth round. The fullback is still there. The fullback we took last year is not very good. Could go back to back Wisconsin players here. If we are gonna end up with Dalvin Cook, that would be huge to have a stud blocking fullback. We know Wisconsin, these guys can lead the way. So we're gonna go there, not gonna complain about that one. And then at the end here, perhaps another either pass rusher or nickel corner, I'm thinking. Definitely could use some uh, edge depth. I'm gonna take kind of a freaky 6'6", 280 pound Calais Campbell project here. So he's, he's definitely a project, but 63 overall, actually not that bad. He's got 70 block shed, 69 power moves, 22 years old. We can work with that. All right, good draft. We're gonna go to uh, right ahead to preseason week one and see if we can get Dalvin Cook in here. And we can't, he ended up signing somewhere. He signs with the Bills for a one year, $780,000 contract. So I don't know what that's all about, but that's not cool. We are gonna change that to an actual massive contract because that's the only thing that would make this any realistic for him to pass up on our offer. So we're gonna go three years, 34 million. So sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, but sorry, Bills. If you're gonna jump in line, you're gonna have to pay for them. I will say it's a good fit. I mean, he could be dangerous there for sure. But with that, I think we should bring Leonard Fournette and Sony Michelle back because we had success with them last year. Why not run them back? We've got the cap space to do that. We're actually gonna have plenty of cap space to bring in a decent chunk of these guys. And then let's examine the rest of the free agent market here. No linemen worth signing, unless there's any young guys. Let's see. Nope. Defensive line, we're fine. I am gonna bring Dwayne Smoot back. Was definitely thinking about uh, re-signing him earlier. Fill out our edge depth. Linebacker, I think we're in pretty good shape. I don't think we really need anyone. Perhaps uh, some young guys available. This Teron Rush actually looks like could be a good defensive end for us. There's a good looking corner here. Elijah Hicks, undrafted. Let's go ahead and sign him. Good looking undrafted free safety out of Wisconsin. Let's give him a go. Really good athlete here, Shaq Bond. I actually like him as a slot corner. I'm gonna sign him and convert him. So some good athletes being added in the preseason here. We're gonna have a lot of cuts, 71 players on the team. Just a couple last pieces of housekeeping here. We gotta make uh, Aju Lowry a defensive end in our scheme. Teron Rush a defensive end. So Ajilari is actually a 77 overall defensive end. Linebackers kind of the same. Go ahead and flip Shaq Bond to slot corner. No good numbers available for him. If he makes the team, we'll give him something better than 46. So lots of tough decisions ahead. We do fall short on getting Dalvin Cook, but not bad to just bring Fournette and Sonny Michelle back. Worked for us last year, so hoping for more of the same. Uh, we're gonna have cuts ahead and then jump into the next season for our next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please do hit that like button. Ready for next season. Peace. Peace.